Dear esteemed players and testers of Primitive Society Simulator, I am the creator, Big Dove. You have participated in the development. I extend my utmost respect to all of you. For players who have not yet participated in the testing, the demo of Primitive Society Simulator is currently available for direct download and play. It offers approximately 10 hours of content. Enjoy playing and don't forget to add a wish list and provide your feedback and criticism. This is the content my team has presented to you from March to May. We will gradually improve this materialistic game. Let's start with something simpler first, as I'm not quite sure how many of the viewers and players are homo sapiens. First of all, in the early years, there will be survival pressure as animals may attack the tribe. This is mainly for gameplay purposes, as in reality, there wouldn't be many animals actively attacking humans at that time. Animals would have likely fled when they saw the campfire and tall, upright naked apes from a distance. In the game, however, picking up weapons and fighting back is the solution, but there will still be some pressure in the early years. Another pressure comes from locusts. They will gradually appear, consuming the vegetation on the map. If you have cultivated fields, they will target them first. Humans are not that tasty, the locusts are selective eaters, preferring the delicious grains in the fields. Next is a slightly more complex gameplay mechanic related to stone tablet carving. In the game, there is a fundamental logic accumulating knowledge to a certain extent leads to inventions and creations. It's not about being a genius, having natural talent, or bloodline. It's not a divine instruction nor is it about gaining experience from defeating monsters or eating books for skills. It's about the accumulation of labor and human thinking. Based on this logic, creating a technology in the game requires both intelligence and knowledge conditions. Intelligence increases through diet, while knowledge is a result of labor and storytelling combined. Essentially, it's education. When a person dies, their knowledge disappears, causing a technological setback. Carving it on a stone tablet can prevent this from happening. At the same time, the knowledge on the stone tablet provides a bonus to storytelling. It's like an early teaching tool. In reality, the ancient forms of carving and painting were initially used to record information. For example, drawing a cow to document a hunting experience or to inform others about the presence of cattle. Later on, this method was also used to express the understanding or aspirations of the world, giving rise to many of the art forms we know today. These artworks are not some incredibly mysterious objects. They were created to convey certain messages. Over time, they were used for showing off, symbolizing status, and making oneself appear more impressive than others. The most complex gameplay in this demo revolves around emotions and culture. Animal emotions are used for social interactions and conveying information to each other. The same applies to humans. In the game, we have currently implemented some simple emotional responses. For example, having sex, interacting with children, or having pets can all boost one's mood. When in a good mood, there are bonuses to work and moral in battle. The gameplay regarding negative emotions is currently more complex. In reality, many of our negative emotions stem from the fundamental fears of being abandoned or feeling useless to others. It is because of these fears that we attempt to control situations and may exhibit anger. Similarly, these fears may lead us to display vulnerability in order to seek sympathy, resulting in acts of begging. Additionally, because we fear that associating with weaker individuals may hinder our own progress or damage our image, we may exhibit contempt or disdain. In the game, we simulate this by portraying humans facing various disasters and experiencing fear due to their inability to comprehend them. As their intelligence and knowledge increase, they become less affected by emotions. For example, in the mood panel, when facing an invasion, there are currently three stages based on intelligence level. In the initial stage of fear, individuals may perceive it as a creator punishment. As their intelligence increases, their understanding of the invasion changes, and they begin to see it as order within the range of weapons. Similarly, there are three stages in how diseases are perceived. At lower levels of intelligence, individuals may believe that creator is warning us through diseases. As intelligence increases, they come to the realization that we need a richer knowledge of herbs to alleviate illness. Negative emotions on the battlefield are primarily driven by fear. Both the enemy and our own warriors may flee due to fear. Therefore, in battle, players need to undermine the enemy's morale while boosting their own. Currently, there are two ways to improve morale, the altar and the war drum. During combat, the war drum can boost morale. Prior to battle, mobilization can be conducted using the altar and rituals for inspiration. The grander the altar, the higher it is built,
the larger its footprint, and the better the food consumed during the ceremony, the higher the morale will be uplifted. If morale is high, there will be a bonus to attack power. Riding a saber-toothed tiger can also strike the enemy's morale, making them experience the inherent fear of large cats encoded in their DNA. In the previous comments, many friends asked about primitive worship and religion. The gameplay mechanics related to emotions are actually one of the real reasons behind the emergence of religion. It served as an explanation for natural phenomena, especially various disasters and death, in order to soothe emotions. During this process of exploration and interpreting nature, a certain worldview was formed. At that time, understanding mostly relied on imagination, which resulted in the presence of many mythological elements. Another reason for the development of religion was public affairs, although this aspect has not been implemented in the game yet. For example, lending food, providing relief to victims during flood, and so on. As for practices like shamanism, incantations, spiritualism, and trickery, they were essentially performances aimed at manipulating emotions, gaining personal benefits, and establishing or consolidating one's own dominance. Therefore, all gameplay mechanics, such as, worship a specific totem for specific buffs, are foolish idealism. Regarding public affairs and the formation of social classes, they may be considered as gameplay elements in future versions. Next, let's talk about some more traditional gameplay elements. I in combat has been implemented. There is a giant ape that throws rocks at the tribe from a long distance, so relying solely on walls for defense is no longer effective. It is necessary to prepare more melee weapons and armor for field battles. The eye for this part will continue to be optimized, and some common strategies used previously, such as toggling city gates or using fast animals for hit and run, may no longer be effective. Factors like morale and training level will gradually become decisive in the battlefield as the game progresses and is further refined. There have been several changes in the trading aspect. We have added transportation vehicles, like the carts. There will also be other means of transportation, such as sledges and leather pouches, which will be implemented later. Trade caravans from other tribes will appear on the map. They will set up a campfire and wait for players to engage in trade. They will stay for a few days and then move on. The world now is a sphere, with tribes of various lifestyles, each offering their own goods for sale. For example, tribes that rely on hunting for survival will sell weapons but may lack food. Husbandry tribes will sell a variety of dairy products, eggs, and high-quality livestock with desirable attributes. Next, let's talk about the process of forming an alliance. It requires fulfilling various conditions. Firstly, in the game progression, you must defend against invasions and gradually build up your armed forces. Then, after the Ice Age, there will be continuous heavy rainfall causing floods. During this time, you will receive a task of help all the world that requires sending out manpower for assistance. Upon successful completion, some tribes will come to pay tribute. After that, you need to construct an altar to showcase your wealth. Additionally, increasing prestige through warfare and achievements, enhancing relationships through trade, and spreading language and writing through oracle bones, will all contribute to the process. Finally, when you have sufficient wealth, prestige, and relationships, you can invite other tribes to hold a meeting. Together, you will discuss and negotiate the establishment of an alliance. This is a meeting to discuss the establishment of alliance. This is the ceremony for the establishment of alliance. Finally, we have also implemented some additional features. There is a difficulty adjustment panel where you can adjust the intensity of various disasters and wars. The decay rate of food and the spawn interval of animals and plants can also be adjusted. We have included a fast construction option for those who wish to build quickly. You can use these features to tailor the game difficulty to your preferences whether you prefer farming and peaceful living or building a powerful empire. Alright, the above is the work my team has accomplished from March to May. We aim to interpret the world from a materialistic perspective and create a game that reflects this ideology. It's a long-term journey, and I look forward to feedback from players.